Welcome back to our lecture. In the previous segment, I talked about continuous delivery and, and some of the challenges associated with delivering our software to customers and how we can use uh, things like feature flags to decouple our software deployments from our software releases. In this segment of the lecture, I want to cover the last remaining component from the comms framework, which is, which is measurement. And DevOps organizations will fanatically collect data. It's part of a continuous improvement process. And again, borrowed from Lean Kaizen. It's a feedback mechanism which we utilize to continuously improve our, our services and validate the changes that we are making to our services. When we're measuring our software platforms, we will collect data from a wide variety of, of different resources and we'll, we'll generally store that data in some sort of centralized repository. The data that we're collecting is usually some sort of time series data. Sometimes it can be unstructured data like, like um, log events and messages that are being emitted by our application servers. By collecting all the data in a, in a centralized repository, it makes it easy for us to search through that data and, and identify uh, trends that are occurring within our software platform. There are a number of different types of measurements that we can take. And when I say measurements, by the way, um, sometimes I'll use the word measurement and telemetry sort of interchangeably. So there, there are a number of different types of, of measurements we can make. We can collect events from our platform and events are sort of like one time or point in time occurrences within our platform. Things like, you know, when, when a, a user logs into our platform, when a user makes a payment, when uh, a user maybe is deploying a, a particular workflow in our platform. Those are events which occur. There are log messages uh, that we can collect from the platform. Our application servers are sort of continuously generating log messages, which contain diagnostic information about how the service is performing. It may contain things like um, error messages. So, you know, these are things like website access logs, um, our Lambda function execution logs. We'll have applications like security uh, audit logs um, th that, uh, that we collect. And then there are metrics, and these are, are generally the uh, uh, observable metrics, the, the you know, numeric data uh, that is being collected from our application and our um, cloud resources. These are things like memory utilization on servers or network latency. Um, it could be things like disk IOs, you know, number of reads and writes to a, a database. These are our numeric values which we can oftentimes instrument in some sort of chart to identify, identify trends over time. And then finally, we might also gather um, application traces. And, and these represent application execution paths uh, through our platform. They could be stack traces. We can use a technology called AWS X-Ray to look at the application calls in a distributed cloud environment, uh, application performance monitoring, a APM tools uh, also allow us to collect these um, application execution paths. And, and these can help us identify bottlenecks within our application platform. There are a number of different sources uh, in our platform that are generating these, these different um, t types of telemetry. You know, we have business activities that are happening where customers are signing up. They're, they may be, maybe they're generating support messages and, or, or contacting our support center. We have application telemetry. 
where the application itself is collecting you know data on transaction times or errors that are occurring we have infrastructure telemetry where we can we can gather information from our our networking infrastructure to see the amount of bandwidth that's that's being consumed we can see cpu utilization on our computing resources and then finally we have client software where your your customer might have a mobile application and we can collect uh, error messages that are being generated on the client application we can in in many cases we can also collect some uh, we can collect things like response time from their client and that'll give us an idea of if certain clients in certain parts of the country may be having, uh, you know, issues accessing our platform, uh, you know, due to some, uh, you know, increased latency in the, in the internet in their in their part of the world. How do we develop telemetry? How do we, uh, you know, support telemetry in our platform? Well. Essentially, you know, this starts with our development teams working in combination with operations people. Remember, I talked about design for operations, and this is one area where the operations people can really help the development teams in, in understanding the, the sort of the, the type of telemetry to collect and how to present that telemetry. The development teams can work on building out dashboards, which, which can sort of instrument that that telemetry data and provide it in, in the form of pretty charts um, that are, are, are more human readable. The developers can instrument their code to uh, produce metrics based on common business activities. Like every single time a, a user logs into the platform, they can generate some sort of telemetry event and that will help people understand what the current platform utilization looks like. And ultimately, the, this, this telemetry development process really needs to be incorporated into the, um, into the you know, development workflow. Like in an in a, in a agile methodology like Scrum, we have this idea of definition of done, which is a way that uh, software developers can identify if they're done working on a story or not. And, and part of this, you know, part of the process of a story being done means that the story is the, the, the code, the feature is actually measurable. There's some way to identify via telemetry if the, the feature is working properly and, and how it's being utilized. Here's an example where we are instrumenting our telemetry. We're, we're taking that raw data, we're doing some analysis on it and providing a, a visual representation of the data. And we can use things like the ELK stack to do that. ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And it's a very common platform that companies will use to collect that, that and instrument the data. You'll also see a, a wide variety of commercial platforms and managed platforms that are available in the marketplace by and provided by companies like like New Relic or, or Datadog or Sumo Logic. These are platforms which are very, very commonly used by businesses to instrument their data. When you, you know, once you instrument your data and you make it human readable, then you want to be able to possibly trigger notifications to your team based on based on telemetry readings. So you know, there, there might be cases where, based on the telemetry data, uh, your platform is clearly exhibiting some sort of performance problem. And, and so you want to be able to alert your software development and your operations teams to let them know that there's a problem. Well, the, the, probably the biggest issue with this notification process is that, um, you know, when, when organizations build out their their telemetry collection systems and they they start generating alerts they'll 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 be generating lots of non-actionable notifications these are notifications that 
You know, somebody gets an alert message, but it doesn't really signify any sort of major problem with the system. And so one of our goals is to weed out those sorts of non-actionable notifications. We might have situations where we get a notification that part of our infrastructure has failed. Maybe an EC2 instance has failed. But if it's part of something like an auto scaling group, then the platform should self heal and, and, you know, to mitigate any sort of potential performance issues. And so if, if, uh, if an EC2 instance fails, do we need to get a notification that, that, that it happened? Probably not. You know, if the, if our platform is self healing, then there's no reason for a, 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 a a human being to, to be to be notified. We'd probably want to log that it happened just so that we can see that it occurred and we can look through history if necessary to diagnose a problem. But we don't necessarily need to send out an alert to our development and operations teams.